This is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this video, we're going to explore dividing integers. Now, dividing integers is uh, very, very difficult to represent using manipulatives or uh, visual representations. Uh, you'll see uh, other videos and, uh, and writings that will show you different ways to do this. Uh, I am going to settle this time for using a missing factor approach to understand division. Basically, revisioning a division problem as a multiplication problem. So what do I mean by that? Let's start on familiar ground with dividing two whole numbers, 8 divided by 2. Now, the two numbers in the division have a name. The number you're dividing into is called the dividend, and the number you're dividing by is called the divisor. The result you get, which for a minute I'm going to leave us in suspense on that, is called the quotient. Now the way to revision this division problem as a, uh, as a multiplication problem is to ask the question, what do you need to multiply by the divisor to get the dividend? What do you need to multiply by the second number to get the first number? What goes in that box will turn out to be the quotient, but we also refer to it as the missing factor. And it's pretty easy to see that what goes in the box this time is a 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. This is a very, this is basically the definition of division and a very basic way to start the concept of division at whatever level you're looking at. Positive numbers, integers, even rational numbers, anything. Since we're talking about integers, let's do an example with some negatives involved. 6 divided by negative 3. What's that equal to? Again, converting that to a multiplication problem, we ask what do we need to multiply by the divisor to get the dividend? What is that missing factor? Um, and that will turn out to be our quotient. Now I have to remember what the rules are for multiplying uh, integers and the signs involved there. If I want to multiply something by negative 3 and get a positive 6, well, as far as the absolute value of that number, it pretty clearly has to be a 2, but negative 3 times positive 2 gives me negative 6. Multiply two numbers with opposite signs, you get a negative number. If I want to get a positive number, these signs will have to be the same. This will have to be a negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. So what goes in the box here is negative 2. And that's going to illustrate the fact that if you take a positive number divided by a negative number, you get a negative number. Well, let's try another one. What if we had a negative number divided by another negative number? What's that equal to? What's the missing factor that represents our quotient? Divisor times missing factor. I don't know why that came out shaped funny. Sorry about that. Divisor times uh, missing factor is equal to dividend. What goes in the box to make that work? So I think about properties of multiplying with integers. Uh, if I put a negative number in there, a negative times a negative would give me a positive. So I guess I'm going to need a positive number to put in the box. And just thinking about the absolute values, that would have to be a 2. Negative 10 divided by negative 5 equals positive 2. So where does that go? That actually illustrates pretty quickly some properties about dividing integers. The quotient of two integers with the same sign will be positive. The quotient of two integers with opposite signs will be negative. If I hang on to that and look at some more examples, let's say I've got 16 divided by Oh, let's say negative 16 divided by 2. Because I'm dividing two numbers with opposite signs, the answer will be negative. There we go. And the absolute value of the answer uh, will be the absolute value of the quotient of the 16 and the 2. 
So 16 divided by 2 is 8. Remembering that a negative divided by uh, we will have a negative 8. Now, sorry about the interruption there. Let's say we have a negative 14 divided by a negative 7. Negative 14 divided by negative 7. We have a negative number divided by a negative number. Quotient of two integers with the same sign will be positive. And then we divide the absolute values, 14 by 7. This answer should be a positive 2. Now, that's a little bit of an illustration of where the rules for signs when dividing integers come into account. I want to take a minute to look at a couple side issues before we leave this, though, because it kind of fits in here well with the missing uh, factor approach. Two very interesting questions. What is 0 divided by 7? And what is 7 divided by 0? Zeros always do weird things. If I want to know what 0 divided by 7 is, I think about, OK, what would be the missing factor? What do I multiply by the divisor to get the dividend? What goes in that box? The missing factor here is pretty simple. Multiply 7 by 0, and you get 0. 0 divided by any number, in fact, is always 0, unless you're dividing by 0 itself. This is the one that will get people sometimes. 7 divided by 0, what's that equal to? Well, let's look in terms of missing factor. What do you multiply by the divisor to get the dividend? What do you multiply by 0 to get 7? And then you think very, very hard, and you think about, is there a number that I could multiply by 0 and get 7? Mm, no, 0 times anything is always 0. No matter what I put in that box, I'm always going to get 0. This cannot be done. And so that is why we always say that division by 0 is undefined. So this is a, that's something you can illustrate very easily with the missing factor approach uh, so that your students don't just have to memorize that as if it was like one of the Ten Commandments that you're not allowed to divide by zero. There is a real reason uh, using the missing factor approach that you can show that division by zero has to be undefined. So that's a little bit of an extra add-on.